Backstory. I am always traveling for work. I would be sent on assignments for weeks and usually to cool places. My job pays for hotel, my airfare, and $50 food voucher for the day. Two years ago, I was sent to San Francisco for six weeks and two weeks in ducking Hawaii. I was so excited. I asked two of my cousins and my sister if they wanted to join me on my work trip. Everyone just pays for their airfare and activities. My family and I went out for brunch on Sunday morning and began to ask them who would like to join me. My sister was unable to go because she was taking a summer class. I asked my aunt if she would allow cousin one and cousin two to go. I began to tell them it's a great opportunity because San Francisco and Honolulu is super expensive and saving on hotel room would help with the burden. Hotel room rates for these two cities goes for $150 to $350 a day. My job placed me in a good hotel room with a beach view in Honolulu. One night stay was $350. I was there for two weeks. I was saving them about $4,900 just in hotel room costs in Honolulu. The hotel room in San Francisco cost $250 a day and I was in San Francisco for two weeks. Conversation. Me, CB mom, cousin one and cousin two. Both cousins are over 21. I have a great opportunity for cousin one and cousin two. I am in San Francisco for six weeks and two weeks in Hawaii. My job is paying for the hotel room, so the only thing my cousins have to worry about is airfare and personal activities. CB aunt. That's so cool. I will buy the tickets tonight and I will let you know how much the airfare was so you can pay me back. Me. I was a tad confused, so I explained to my aunt that my cousins will have to pay for their own airfare and personal activities. They don't have to pay for hotel room. CB aunt. Wait, you want cousin one and two to pay for their own airfare? Why can't you pay for their airfare and stuff? You are working? Me. Cousin one and two is also working and making money. At the same time, they were in summer vacation and they were able to take time off easily because they both worked at their school library at their colleges. Aunt. Cousin one and two are not paying. They have to go free. My mom steps in the conversation to save me. Mom. This really is a good opportunity because your kids are going to save about $2,000, maybe even $3,000 because my daughter is saving them the hotel room cost. Me. Trying to help still. I can help Cousin 1 and 2 get airfare discounts through my company, and I won't mind sharing my food voucher with them. It's $50, but I bet we can live on sandwiches. CB Aunt Why can't you ask your company to pay for their airfare? Me Because Cousin 1 and 2 are not employees. CB Aunt In a nasty attitude Well, if you want your cousins to go, you will have to pay for their airfare, meals, and personal activities. If you want company, that's the price you will pay. You are robbing them for a good experience. You are a greedy person who needs to learn how to share. Her last remark really hurt me. A week before I left on my trip, I asked them one last time. My aunt kept saying I was robbing them from the best experience of their lives because I was refusing to pay. My mom joined me on my trip and using company discount, I was able to find a round trip flight for $500 for her. My mom paid for her own flight. We both split the food voucher. I would work from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Monday to Thursday on this particular work trip, which made it easier to work and travel. Mom spent about $1,000 on a two-week trip to Hawaii, and she doesn't regret it. My job doesn't really care if I bring company, as long as it doesn't interfere with my job performance. That is really crappy of them. I'd have literally jumped at the chance to go somewhere new or for an adventure at an almost heavily discounted price. Like what, a thousand dollars for a nine week holiday essentially? I'd be like, sign me the duck up. And if possible, can we find cheap airfare? But if not, totally understandable. I don't know, your aunt sounds like a massive jerk and your cousins are kind of silly for not wanting a super awesome holiday for almost nothing. Wow, I'm surprised your cousins didn't just say duck it and pay for the tickets. I mean, the only thing I can see is they are afraid of what your aunt can do to them and their stuff if they choose to say, whatever, it's ducking Hawaii. Some family thought since I was in the US and graduated EE, I am rich. So I need to buy them family car and TV. I stopped that quick. I remember my mom saying since I'm the oldest of all my cousins, 
I'm technically supposed to be the next head, after her father, since her oldest brother has passed. So, to shut them up, and they know I wouldn't force them to, but as head of the house, I would be given the family home. I would have the power to kick them all out. They are supposed to gift me after having graduated university. I only got a congrats card, etc. But yeah, sounds like it sucks, especially for your two cousins. I wouldn't doubt they resent your aunt more than you. This happened years ago when my husband and I lived on a military base, and I ran an in-home daycare that was regulated through Child and Youth Services, CYS. We had one child of our own, and it was a remote base, so jobs were scarce, so I figured this was a good option for me to work and be able to also stay home with our kiddo. The daycare spots were a shortage, and that meant I was full and even had a wait list. This also meant I could kind of pick and choose the kids I had in my care. For the most part, I had great kids and decent parents. I even became friends with one of the sets of parents, and that was my mistake. This mom, let's call her Karen, seemed to be normal, not entitled, when we first met. She even had her family over for barbecues on a couple weekends, and things were good. During the time of having daycare open, I became pregnant with our second child. I have issues with headaches, and when I am pregnant, they get so much worse. Karen began asking me to babysit after hours for free, as friends, for her. I agreed once in exchange for her watching our son once in return, and she agreed. I watched Karen's kids, and she never followed through and watched ours. After that, Karen frequently asked me to allow her kids to stay late and not get charged, and also, she would ask me to babysit after hours for free, and each time I would say no, and I used my headaches as a reason. Karen actually said, you can't use being pregnant as an excuse forever. I said, no, not forever, but for about nine months. And it was about this time, I knew I would not be able to keep running my daycare after a couple months because of the high-risk nature of my pregnancy. I started by informing the CYS and then put a letter together for the parents, and I gave them two months' notice to find care. This was an additional 30 days over and above what is required in the contract. I wanted to be fair, and I knew it might be hard to find care. I was also releasing them from their contracts as soon as they could find care. They did not need to give me notice. I handed out the letters at pickup that day. Karen waited till the other parents left and tore up her letter with a smile. Karen, will you throw this away for me? Me. Sure, but you did get the gist, right? Karen. Yeah, you are closing your daycare because you're pregnant and don't want to deal with all those other people. Me. No, I'm closing because I have a high-risk pregnancy and my doctor says I shouldn't be chasing after all the kids and I will have lots of appointments. Karen. Yeah, but you can still watch K1 and K2 for me. And since you won't be a full daycare, you can do it for a lot cheaper. Me. Karen, I am closing my daycare. Karen, okay, but at least you can watch my kids for free while I find daycare and be my backup care. Me, no, I'm sorry, Karen, I'm not doing that. Karen, this is ridiculous. Women get pregnant all the time, and you already have to watch your son. You can totally watch my two kids too, or are you telling me you can't watch your son either? Me, I'm not going into this. I think it's time for you to find a new provider. Karen, Fine, but I don't think I should have to pay you while I look. Me. You have to pay or I will stop watching your kids. Karen left with her kids. She kept bringing her kids, and when it was time for her payment, all of a sudden, her husband came to get the kids and dropped them off and said Karen will be bringing the payment. This went on for two days, and then I told him that if I wasn't paid, I would not accept the kids into care, and they would still owe me for the past due. Karen showed up on the third day and wrote a check. This was normal, but it bounced, and that was not. I then contacted CYS and let them know per the contract. I gave them an invoice for the $25 non-sufficient funds fee and a 48-hour notice to pay in full in cash. Karen's husband showed up and paid, but he said Karen was going to be upset because she did not want to pay. I guess she felt I should be watching their kids for free since I was closing my daycare. I talked to her husband and said I feel it's best he find new care as soon as possible and that until he does, I would need to be paid in advance for the care. I had the kids for two more weeks. A way funny later event that happened. After I gave birth to our daughter, this had to be about a year and a couple months after closing the daycare, 
Karen called me. She wanted me to babysit her kids overnight so they could go to Las Vegas to a military ball. Oh, did I mention she wanted me to do this for free? I said no. <laughs> How did she not get the hint with you telling her no all the time? No idea. I think she really believed if she kept asking, I would say yes. Plus, you know, I can't use the excuse of being pregnant forever. I'm the single friend, and there was a period of time where a couple would ask me to babysit, and they'd come home later and later and not call. Then, the pay got smaller. Finally, they got pissed because I wouldn't babysit on my birthday, so they could go to someone else's party. That was the end of that, and I no longer babysit for anyone. Give people an inch. This story happened many years ago. While we were in the military, we moved frequently, and at one base in particular, we lived in a condo-style house. Lines of homes that have one or two walls that are connected to each other. I mention the type of house because it shows how close we were to our neighbors. We did have our own driveway, but they were for single cars, and we were right next to our neighbors. This base was a warm location where we should have had air conditioning, but we did not. We were enlisted and lived in older houses, and only newer enlisted and officer housing had AC. The reason I mention this is because I would leave my front door open and just have the screen door closed, so we could get crosswind to cool the house. This should have not been a big deal, right? Wrong. Our neighbors that was connected to our left like to come over and borrow things. Our neighbor, or choosing beggar, will be referred to as CB moving forward would come over and at the beginning she would knock and she would ask for things such as a cup of sugar or milk. Then as time progressed, CB would knock and just walk in and at this point she still asked for stuff. To be honest, this didn't really bother me too bad because it wasn't too frequent. And then all of a sudden it changed and CB stopped knocking altogether and began just walking in. I did say something keeping it light in hopes that it would work. I knew we were going to be neighbors for a while, and it would be bad to have a bad relationship between neighbors. Back then, I had a lot of anxiety about having negative interactions with people. Then, CB became pregnant, and her entitlement all of a sudden knew no bounds. CB would not only walk into my house, she would go into my fridge or freezer and grab whatever she wanted. This one time, I was making dinner, and she walked over, smelled it, grabbed a plate, and served herself. I said something to the effect of, I am making that for my husband, and CB responded that she is only taking a little and there will be plenty for him. That was it. I was mad. After that, I tried locking my screen door, but the cheap lock wouldn't hold. CB was able to pull the door open and eventually snap the lock off. I finally said screw it and started shutting my actual door, which sucked because it was hot and no AC. But it was better than dealing with her every day. I thought that would work, but she started going through our back door and coming through our screen door. Oh, did I mention that her husband was like three ranks higher than mine was and she was seriously taking from us when they could afford way more? Anyway, this went on while CB was pregnant. Finally, after CB had her baby, CB started asking for even more. She wanted my husband to come kill bugs when her husband wasn't home. She asked me to do things she could easily do for herself, like go to the grocery store. The final straw was, she woke me up at 2 a.m., saying, so cold and mumbling. I seriously thought something was wrong with her baby. I got up, woke my husband up, let him know, and ran over to her house. And I do mean ran. I ran into her house, door was unlocked, and CB was laying on the couch. She wasn't feeling good. She wanted me to get her a blanket from her upstairs closet. I finally lost my crap and told her I thought something was wrong with her baby. It was over, and I told her, CB, you are not to walk into our house without permission, and you are not to ask my husband for anything anymore. The only way it is ever okay to call me in the middle of the night ever again is because you need 911. CB just looked at me and said something about, since I am here, can I get the blanket, and that I am being a horrible neighbor. I walked out of the house, went home and went to bed. Moving forward, CB scowled at me every time she saw me and pointed at me and talked about me to her husband and other neighbors who told me later. CB's husband got orders and they finally moved. I was so happy because she made it uncomfortable being at my own home till she did. Da duck? I ducking hate military wives who think they wear their husband's rank. I am an officer, 
but I will never allow my wife to be determined to think that she is ever above anyone else. Spouses are spouses, period. I agree. It is funny because I am a veteran and was a spouse, so I had both sides. And I will say I appreciate you being an officer, understanding that for your future wife. It sucks when officer wives talk down to you because you are an enlisted spouse. Not sure if you are aware, but that is really commonplace. For some reason, a lot of officer spouses act better than enlisted. I actually had a good friend who was married to an officer, and then her second marriage to enlisted, and she told me how the officer wives used to talk. 